In this class, I will discuss about network visualization. So it's more rather short uh, digression on the topic because we have used already several times uh, network visualizations, but I haven't explained how to interpret uh, them. What can we say and what we cannot say on these visualizations? So um, we have already used several visualization like the one you have on this slide uh, of networks and you even have produced your own with Jeffy or with NetworkX. Um, and the question is, uh, how? what can we say with, on, on them? Uh, what does the position of nodes mean, for instance? Or can we draw conclusion based on uh, those drawings alone? Um, so there are several types of uh, visualization, visualization that exist, obviously. The first uh, naive one will be a random layout in which uh, we will pick uh, positions for nodes at random and then just draw the edges between those nodes. Of course, this is uh, useless as soon as we have more than five or six nodes because you get well what you have an example on the slide, uh, something which is not usable. So because of this, we need to choose um, to attribute some meaningful position to the nodes in order to understand the drawing. Um, one uh, way to do that is to use some geographical layout, or we will see other example. If you have some position, some attributes, uh, attributes for the nodes that you can use uh, as a position. So obviously, the, the, the most um, simple example is with uh, geographical information. So on the bottom, you have a, a drawing of a map. And you clearly see that uh, if we draw the position here of all our nodes, uh, we see uh, a map that appears very clearly um, and that we can uh, interpret. So here, the the position of the nodes corresponds to their geographical uh, position. If you don't have, if your nodes do not correspond to some, some position, uh, you can nevertheless use another attribute if it's meaningful uh, as, as a position. So you have an example on the bottom right in which we draw um, nodes on a circle. So of course, if the, the value, you, so you see that you have uh, one, uh, nodes are ordered according to an attribute, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. So obviously, if, um, if this, um, this information is simply a random number, it's useless. But if you take uh, uh, these nodes sorted, for instance, according to a meaningful property like age, or uh, something else that you might be interested in, uh, this might be meaningful. Or if you take, for instance, some uh, here categorical information corresponding to, to colors, for instance, um, as, a, as the, the, the position in the one dimensional uh, order of nodes, then this plot uh, as, a, as a circle can become meaningful. But most of the time, uh, what we use to plot graphs are uh, automatic layout. Um, the idea is that uh, if I give you nodes and edges, you will try to put these nodes and edges in a way that make the drawing uh, the most simple to read and to understand. So a first way to do that was for instance, to, to minimize the number of edge crossings. So you don't want edges to, to cross. Um, obviously, this is not possible for most real graphs. You cannot plot them uh, without any crossing. And in particular, uh, so it's known that if you can do it, then the graph has a particular property. It's a property, it's a planar graph. But this is very rare. So you can imagine maybe plotting like that um, road network, like an urban network, for instance, you can imagine that you can plot it mostly without crossing, although you have, of course, some tunnels and bridges that uh, will bring will uh, bring some crossings. But at least you can have very few of them. 
But for a more complex network, like social networks, you have no chance to really minimize the, the crossings. Uh, so more generally, what uh, methods try to do is to try the nodes which are connected uh, close to each other and nodes that are not connected more far away from each other or, or each other. That's a general principle. Uh, something important to remember is that uh, this algorithm usually they are non-deterministic. So if you run the same method twice on the same network, you will get two different uh, results. And even more important, uh, here you see, for instance, on the bottom, I've taken several uh, plots of the same graph, but uh, I've uh, found them randomly on the internet. So they were uh, drawn with different layouts, probably. And you see that the same graph is actually looks actually quite different depending on the layout that you have used. So, um, Obviously, this tells you that you cannot just rely on one picture of one graph and make some important uh, interpretation of it based on, on a single drawing, especially if you don't know uh, exactly what this, uh, this algorithm for layout is. So in fact, most of the visualization we have uh, made using uh, NetworkX or Jeffy were based on a common principle called the force-directed uh, layout. So you have seen instances as uh, called uh, Kamadakawa or fresh Terman ringold uh, methods, but they are all based on the same ideas of, of a force-directed layout. And the uh, default method in NetworkX or Jeffy, they are also instances of this general ID of uh, force-directed layout, even though they are implemented in a way to be optimized uh, for a computational point of view. So the general idea of all these methods is to use a physical model to uh, position the nodes. So this physical model has two kinds of forces. There is a repulsive force between the nodes. So the nodes try to get as far as possible from uh, each other. And the edges act as uh, attracting forces, so um, kind of spring. Um, so that's why it's also called the spring layout sometimes. And uh, so you have this uh, spring between the nodes and uh, repulsive forces uh, that try to, to put them uh, 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 apart. And uh, so that's the interaction between these two kinds of forces. We tend to put nodes that are connected close to each other and those that are not uh, connected more uh, far away. And obviously, there are some uh, other um, parameters usually, such as uh, a minimal distance if you don't want nodes to, uh, to overlap, so you try to, to put a minimal distance between them, and maximal distance also to avoid having uh, the graph spreading too much uh, on, on, on the space. So you need to, uh, to find the proper parameters of, uh, of, the, of the physical model in order to have a good uh, visualization. Um, more recently, there were also some other approaches proposed uh, that are not currently implemented in NetworkX or, or Jeffy in, by standard. But uh, these approaches are based on something we will see in later classes called the graph embedding or neural networks. But the, the general idea is to, to maximize the similarity between the measure of distance in the graph and uh, the distance in the drawing. Okay, so even if they are not connected, uh, if you know that two nodes can be easily reach uh, can easily reach each other in the graph at uh, distance two, for instance, they, are, they have many connections at distance two, then you will try to put them close in the drawing. Um, yeah, and if you cannot reach them easily on the graph, you will try to put them more more far away, far away, and you will try to respect uh, this relative distance uh, in the drawing. So here I'm sharing an example of uh, a website on which you can go and observe how a same graph can be plotted in different way when trying to optimize uh, different objectives, for instance. So using this example, we can see how uh, yeah, using different objectives, the graph really look uh, different with maybe, for instance, here some, some groups that are uh, really far away, like uh, the the one on the top right, 
And uh, with different objectives, maybe the, all the groups are more clearly seen. And uh, in other one, maybe you can you can see that we put more emphasis on, I don't know, maybe the the, the corporate free structure or, or something else. So what is important to, to remember here is that um, since the same graph can really be displayed in different uh, ways, you cannot just rely on one uh, visualization to um, to interpret your, your graph. Which leads me to the conclusion. So can we interpret a, a force directed layout? So can we un un interpret a graph plotted using one of those uh, automatic layouts? So yes, sometimes. For example, for instance, on the on the graph on the bottom left, you see that you have um, colors and uh, position of nodes, and you, the position of nodes seems to be really correlated with the with the position. So you have the red uh, on the right and the blue on the left, and these colors correspond to some known uh, property of the nodes here, the the political uh, side liberal or conservatives. Uh, but when the drawing is done, it's using an automatic layout. So um, the position is not based on the colors. It's just based on edges and absence of edges. And we see that there is this very strong correlation. So if you don't have the information of the color, you can clearly see that this network seems to be uh, split in two, uh, two well separated parts. And um, and this is maybe important to, to understand how the, the graph is organized. So yes, in, in this case, we see that uh, lo just looking at the graph can be helpful because we see that it's correlated with something that we already know about the graph, like liberals and conservatives. You have another example on the bottom uh, right, where you see dots uh, corresponding to um, students in a, in a high school. And uh, colors correspond to classes of uh, of uh, these students. And again, we see a strong correlation between what is known, the classes, and the position of the node, because all the nodes, uh, all the students belonging to the same class, seems to uh, be close together on this drawing. So yes, in both these cases, the position of the node can really be interpreted as uh, a, a, a way to capture the organization of the network. But uh, it's also possible that the authors of this drawing, they have chosen this visualization with the right parameter so that we see clearly that the, 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 the graph uh, can be interpreted uh, based on this uh, information of uh, classes or political party. So in many cases, however, uh, you cannot use a force layout to interpret your graph. So sometimes on the left uh, here, for instance, um, it seems that it's uh, difficult or it, it was the, the layout was not uh, used in this case, was not successful to really uh, make the graph interpretable. So we see with the colors that maybe there are some uh, circles of node, green, red, and blue, uh, around maybe some central node. But it seems that the layout was not really able to, uh, to, to, to display this in an interpretable way. And sometimes, as in on, on the drawing on the right, uh, it seems that it's just impossible to have a proper drawing. Just if you have too many nodes and too many edges, it seems impossible to obtain some helpful uh, drawing of the graph, even though maybe even in this case, we can see that the green node seems to be on the same side and red nodes on another side. But clearly, it's very difficult to, to interpret such a, such a drawing. Um, another example uh, is uh, this famous uh, counterintuitive example in which you have uh, two graphs. Uh, and the one on the left um, seems to be, you can interpret it as uh, saying, well, it looks like a hierarchy of nodes. So it's a hierarchical organization. You have a central node, which is the red one, and there are some peripheral uh, nodes, which are the, the green ones. So it's really a hierarchical organization. While on the right, you have something which seems uh, more uh, egalitarian. All the nodes have the same position. Uh, and so these two networks, uh, if you interpret them just on based on this drawing, they seem to be really different. But in fact, obviously, it's the exact same graphs with the same nodes and the same edges. 
So this is an example uh, that you should uh, remember when you interpret a drawing. It's not because two nodes are close together or one node seems to be more, more central in the drawing. Uh, this is not enough to conclude something. It can be very useful to get an intuition of your network. But if you really want to uh, make some useful interpretation uh, based on it, you need to use things that we have already seen, like community detection, like um, uh, centralities and so on and so forth, quantitative uh, scores to really uh, understand the organization of the graph. Uh, 